that time. In mice, maize, and tomatoes, we also see a strong association with combinations of diversity within species, but not to the birds between. In humans, there's some humans, you know. In humans, there's a significant relationship of recombination to diversity within species and to divergence between species. And yeast, curiously, there's no clear relationship at all. It's very contradictory. So why the difference? It's a little puzzling. Well, there's some explanations for why you might see this association for recombination and diversity. One is a recombination causes mutations. I think recombination involves double strand breaks and pair of it. And maybe in the process of repair, you're introducing more mutations. You can have secondary effects with the GC content or other things. You can have hitchhiking, which is the part, this is what the kind of progress is, the spread of adaptive variants, removing variation, which introduces low recombination. Or you can have background selection, which is basically hitchhiking in reverse. It's essentially the elimination of bad mutations in the same thing. The Drosophila community has always assumed this very strongly assume it's this. They say well, it can't be this top one because we would have seen the association between the combination of the convergence. So how do we distinguish these mutual selective causes? Right, so here's, here's Otu Kimura to illustrate neutrality and Darwin to illustrate the selection. But neutrality predicted we should see a similar relationship between combinations of divergence between species as to diversity within species. We don't see that with the studies of Drusal and Lyon The other thing that predicts is the association of recombination to diversity to be strongest when you measure recombination at the smallest scale. If you look right at a recombination hotspot, you should see a big difference in uh, sequence. Whereas if you go further and further away, you should see less of that difference. The problem is that Drosophila has been set, set for many years there's no Drosophila recombination hotspots. This test is not possible. This has been said a whole lot. Unfortunately, nobody told the flies. If you ask them why, what? There's no hotspots of recombination in Drosophila. Well, this is, a, this is a quote from a review in 2002. Recombinational hotspots such as those observed in humans and mice are missing in Drosophila. There's also a review from 2001, 2004, 2007. They all say this. There's no data that say that anywhere. But the reviews all say it over and over again. The evidence for this lack of hotspots, this lack of variation of recombination rate, is that it's a rapid decay of linkage to support the physical distance. And that's not good evidence at all. So lack of apparent hotspots of recombination in one gene in Rosie. Just frequent reiteration, you said it enough, it must be true. Not a good result. So, what we sought to do in our laboratory, we started as a graduate student's first year project when she joined the lab, is to look and see is there a fine scale variation across the way for software? We always knew there's a broad scale variation. We know near central here is a combination is low, outside it's higher. But do we see it at a fine scale? If you were to look at, say, a million bases, you see some places where recombination is high and some places where it's low, like in human recombination hotspots. If it exists, is it associated with quick type diversity within species? And is it associated with quick type diversity between species? So these are some things that we've been studying now for quite some, several years. So first, is there a fine-scale variation in cross of Sopha? We looked at a 2 megabase, 2 million base region on the X chromosome. It's between two visible markers, the yellow gene and the white gene. This was a, this was a great student project. This was somebody who just joined the lab. She's never done anything before. So to cross yellow and white, the offspring get a heterozygote. And I said, just pull out ones that are recombinant between those two things. And then genotype them for markers all along that region. So it's a very simple study. And she found in me these are 95% confidence intervals. She found in me there's a lot of variation in crossover rate, even in this two megabits per minute. Now this is these are kind of big swaths. So what she did is she picked this, this part right here from G to J and broke it up further. And look at this. This high point here is more than 50 centimorgans per megabase. So that's a very high recombinant rate. The low point here is less than five uh, centimorgans per megabase. There's more than a 38-fold difference between the highest and lowest now, just within this one to two megabase window. So yes, there does appear to be a lot of variation in cross-array for software. The the, there are actually hot spots or something like hot spots. This was just looking at one region on the X, so we wanted to look more broadly, because it's repeatable in other regions. So we looked across the second chromosome. So these are positions along the second chromosome. This is a recombination rate of several of these megabases. And again, we see significant fine variation across the These are 95% confidence. Very broad, but we do see quite a bit of this variation going on. So we published this a couple of years ago. Even in other species, more so Drosophila superscript, this is now Drosophila for symbols. We have these peaks in recombination. Again, these are basically recombination hotspots. We do see the significant line variation in them. The other thing, this is a question that came up right off the bat, so I showed you this was Drosophila for symbols, this was Drosophila superscript. How similar are the two species in their recombination? In fact, they're actually very similar. Look at that. Look at the, the, the match between them. This is kind of Drosophila Miranda and Drosophila Superscura. But if you look at the blue is Drosophila Superscura, the light green is Miranda. They line up very well. 
recombination rates are very higher than correlated along all these chromosomes. But interestingly, we do see that recombination rate is higher consistently for solid memoranda. See how the light blue is always taller than the, than the dark blue? This suggests that maybe there's a global recombination rate modifier. That maybe something just made all recombination higher than solid memoranda rate for solid memoranda rate even in the same regions. Okay. So, to answer the first question, there is fine scale variation in the process of aging for solid. So, second question is, does it matter? Is this uh, recombination variation associated with nucleotide variation within species? Do we see an effect of DNA sequence variation, or just is it just there? And then secondarily, is that association stronger than the association with broad scale with recombination? So this is using fine scale. Is it better to use the fine estimates, or is it better to use the broad estimates in terms of trying to predict diversity? So this is showing you, this is the, the plot that my, uh, my rotation student did a long time ago. So she looked at variation in 10 strains of superscura this in this region. Five of these regions are within 200 kilobases of each other. And she looked at the association between recombination rate, which is what's on this axis, and variation. What she found, there's a very high significant association between fine scale recombination rate and, var and nucleotide variation. Very strong. We don't usually see plots that strong in uh, evolutionary genetics. So this was using very precise recombination estimates. We did the same thing looking at Drosophila superscura a little bit more broadly across the second chromosome. And again, there's a significant association of pi, which is a measure of nucleotide variation, to recombination when you're using these windows that are fairly small, less than 500 kilobases across the second chromosome. So that was true of superscura. It was also true of Drosophila persimilis. Same thing, once again, the plot for recombination. And again, it's a positive association of Finally, also in your sophomore Miranda, same thing, significant positive association to uh, recombination variations. So, the secondary question is broad scale variation or fine scale variation recombination more strongly associated with DNA sequence diversity? So, what we did this is not statistically proper, but it will at least illustrate the point. We did a multiple regression of fine scale recombination rates in each of these and broad scale recombination or this average across the big windows here to see which one better predicts sequence variation, sequence diversity. And what we found is that doing this, the fine scale recombination rate has a very strong association. The broad scale recombination rate has an almost significantly negative, so an almost non-existent association there. So you have a much stronger association of nucleotide sequence diversity to fine scale crossover rate. This is very important because if you think about it, the error in estimates of the fine ones is much greater than the error estimates of the broad ones. So the fact that the fine ones have a stronger association is counterintuitive. This is also important because if you use the wrong scale for recombination, you can actually miss an association with to diversity or divergence. As you saw down here, this was completely non significant when we were looking at broad recombination. And this is actually an older study from our lab. We actually tried to look at the association between recombination rate and nucleotide variation. We didn't really see it, but we were using old estimates of recombination rate that were very crude. You really need that precise estimate to do So, we see an association with diversity of recombination rate, and we know it's stronger when recombination is examined in very small windows, like at the level of hot spots. So, is fine scale recombination variation associated with nucleotide difference between species? This is what we got a part of said no to. So we looked at uh, the difference between the sophomore soups here and the sophomore Miranda. Here's the recombination landscape again. And the answer is no. It is not. We see a non-significant association of divergence to recombination of all this chromosome. This is from my, my student, Katie Sukowski. So why is it non-significant? Well, there's two possible reasons it could be non-significant. First, there's a mechanistic explanation. This is a very simple explanation. Maybe the local recombination rates have changed between Sophomore Soup Scura and Miranda. But maybe if you go here, yes, this is the recombination rate in Soup Scura, but it's not yet in Miranda. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the evolutionary history. That's one possibility. The other possibility is the selective explanation, which is the relationships with different by hitchhiking and or background selection. Well, we can cross out this top one because we know that recombination rates between Soup Scura and Miranda are totally conserved. Showed you that before. And we know that recombination rate is positively associated with diversity within Miranda and within Superscura. So we can safely say that we can exclude the top one and accept the selective explanation. So after much, much, much effort, we can say the gun and quadro were probably right. That's good. They're happy. <laughs> so the questions we addressed with this half of the talk are first, is there, is there fine scale variation in recombination rate in Yes. So the reviews were wrong. The gun and quadro were right. 
And this fine scale recombination rate is strongly associated with nucleotide diversity within species, how much DNA sequence diversity you see there. This association of diversity to recombination is strong when you look at very small windows of DNA recombination. So if you look at the level of hot spots. And finally, recombination creation is not associated with divergence between species, which suggests that natural selection is the cause for the association of DNA species. So it's very compelling, I think, with this new data that it says. Nonetheless, we're still looking at a little bit more carefully. We've got a better outgroup species, so we used Rosal from Land and Port. We actually just recently got Rosal from Bowie, which is a nicer outgroup species, so a little bit more distantly related. Uh, we're also doing several super fine estimates for combination. We're looking at 20 kilobase windows, and my poor technician has to survey them by PCR, so literally it's not by any automated, and 10,000 backcross progeny. <laughs> So that's taking a little while. <laughs> we also have uh, extensive genome sequencing within Rosalba Soups here to get better estimates of diversity and much polio. At least 10 genome sequences, and we're continually getting more. In fact, I got an email yesterday saying how to download the next set of genome sequences. We have lots of analysis in progress. We're hoping to submit the in the coming month more work on this. But again, since it's a, I don't take any credit to people in my lab or anything this work. So, Overall take-home message, in case you didn't understand anything from my talk, then I can talk back. <laughs> this is all you need to know right here. <laughs> First, recombination opposes speciation. That is, if you have lots of recombinations, it's more likely that species will fuse. Restricting recombination can facilitate speciation, can make it better for a species to stay apart. That's the summary of the first half of the talk. Second half of the talk, recombination has a big effect on DNA sequence or nucleotide diversity within species. And that this seems to be in part resulting from the action natural selection, either hitchhiking or background selection. So that's, that's a summary of the whole talk, if you want to just write that down. Right there. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to acknowledge my lab who did the real work on this. Biology department of support for the community university. Of course, Colleen Wall for inviting me. Oops. Right. Uh, Christina and Henry for, uh, for uh, inviting me on here and hosting me. Your picture here for listening to this. <laughs> and of course, the people who did the real work. There's my lab. As everybody always points out whenever I show this picture, yes, there does appear some sex ratio out of dry.